what's up people making a quick video kind of just returning back to the channel here um, I wanted to let you guys know why I took some time off um, I had a lot of financial issues health issues uh, and then I had catastrophe happen I lost a bunch of fish due to the cold weather that came in here in Florida which we're not used to um, lost about 60% of my fish my breakers and my uh, heaters were not able to keep up with the weather. Um, I guess the amount of heaters I had uh, turned my breaker off while I was sleeping. I woke up to about 60% of my fish dead. But I wanted to make a video. I almost quit. Uh, but I, I don't know if I share this with you guys. I'm a Christian and I've dedicated myself to Jesus Christ and I'm involving Him in everything now. Um, I'm changing my life in that way. And so as I got down and was getting ready to quit, I just prayed about it and I feel that I can still continue uh, with what I have. I just wanted to make this video because I have a lot of emails, uh, message from all sorts of social media platforms, uh, people wanting tips on how to breed aggressive fish, how do you get a bigger species to breed with a smaller species. And so I'm just sharing at first just the two methods that I use. I'll make another video of sharing my experience of how I learned the behavior of these fish. I've been doing this for about 30 years, but I wanted to make a video. I wanted you guys to know I'm back. Um, I didn't quit the channel. Uh, hopefully with uh, God's help, I can succeed even better than I was in the past. Um, so right now, I don't have a lot of breeders. I do have a certain couple of species left, and I'm trying to deal with what I have. Um, Hopefully, uh, I can get some more fish as my finances get better. Uh, like, I love rainbow cichlids. That's one of my main uh, species. And I'm down to my last female. Uh, can't find them here, they're kind of hard. Plus, my finances aren't uh, where they should be. And so, I'm just dealing with what I got. But I wanted to make this video. I hope you guys like it. Share it, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit the little notification. I'm gonna start uploading as many videos as I can. Uh, I still do have some surprise uh, stuff out there. I do the crazy stuff. I know there's a lot of people say this ain't, this can't happen. This won't happen. Uh, I like I like that challenge. So I'll keep doing it. Uh, as long as I put God first, there's nothing impossible. Thank you guys for subscribing. I hope you guys uh, have a, have had a good new year, and uh, I will be coming up with more videos. Thank you. God bless. Hi right, people. So this is kind of like the stuff that I use. Um, to breed my fish. This right here uh, is a, I call it a cage. Well, I saw a video a long time ago. Uh, a guy in Thailand was using these. Now they use them out of plastic. I use mine in metal because it's cheaper. The material for the plastic actually costs a lot more. And I know people are going to say it's not good for the fish. Listen, when, uh, when you fish here in Miami and you see how they live outside in the wild, uh, there's like metal, fridge, I mean, you name it. You know, over there in the canals, some of the nastiest water I've ever seen. And the fish are thriving all day. Um, but anyhow, I don't put this all the time. Only when I have a small or a female that is not engaging with the male through this divider that I made. Um, I'll use this also uh, in the case where I got uh, a male and a female locking up through, through they'll lock up through this divider sometimes and they'll sometimes get a little bit wounded in their mouth so I'll use this because this will stop all of that I can also make this at any size so I can make this is actually for a if I'm not mistaken this is for a 55 gallon it comes all the way to the top so I can feed the fish from up there um, I normally don't make them this big um, this wide I had a big female in here um, and she needed a space to be able to swim around and, around. and she did lay and I did get some eggs out of her. Um, but I normally make these for smaller fish so when I want a smaller breed fish, let's say for example a convict in here and I'm using maybe a doe by, and yes I said a doe by, uh, on the outside um, I want her to act normal inside here and feel safe knowing that the doe bite cannot get to her and she will eventually lay after a while 
um, as, once he starts feeling safe. And the dobai can actually fertilize it from the outside. He never has to come in contact with her. And I can get babies that way. I've done it that way. Um, I used that method one time with a black nasty and a rainbow cichlid. My second time doing that pair. Uh, and they worked just fine. Uh, the rainbow cichlid was tiny. The black nasty was about this big. And he would swim around, swim around. And she felt comfortable enough to lay. Uh, this is... You can get this at Lowe's. I'll show you guys another video later detailing how I make it. So I just basically measure the height of the tank where I want this to sit and make sure the fluid and everything is good. Um, and just kind of go from there. Um, you just measure it out to your knees, whatever tank you need, whatever size. Um, these dividers, I make them myself. So this right here, you get a dollar tree. I forgot what they're called, but it's meant to like dry, um, basically dry your dishes. Uh, they're a dollar, or they used to be a dollar, now the dollar tree is a dollar twenty-five. So this is about a dollar, and again, like I said, I do everything budget. Then back then, the PVC pipes were pretty cheap. I can get a, I'm not sure if they were eight or ten feet uh, long, it used to be for this particular size, it was like $1.49. I know the prices have gone out ridiculous, but um, it's still probably cheaper than getting one uh, custom made. So, and it's just uh, some 90 degree elbows and, and basically just your PVC pipe, some zip ties on there. Um, I just kind of use it to hold the net in. And this is one of the first ones I made, so they're not too great in the beginning. The first ones I made. You do have to watch the fish that you put in here. So you can see there's a hole in here. Uh, that was from an aggressive fish that just kept biting on it and biting on it. Um, but even even then, it would take them the amount of time. This is it's probably a three, four year old one. Uh, to rip it up, it just takes a while, it wears down. And I usually just change out the net. It'll give you another one or two years. I can make this at any size, because the way I do it, and I'll make a more detailed video on this, is I basically cut it out to the measurements of the tank. So I'll, I'll measure the tank um, and basically make sure that it is a tight fit. Sometimes I cut them, uh, you can kind of play with them as you push them in. Sometimes they're either too, it's too uh, wide and you gotta push the elbows in and that'll give you that tight notch. Or what you don't wanna do is make these too small because then you have to cut them again because of course they won't hold in and the fish will move it. I put this as tight as possible. I used to make it a little too tight um, and I didn't notice but it was actually pulled in the glass and, and I, I ended up having some tanks leak um, because of the pressure. So now I make it just perfect um, where it's sitting uh, snugly and tight but it's not making the pressure on the tank itself so I've learned you know from like I said I, the first one I made was probably 2015 seven years ago um, they work and I made it for every size I believe this is for 20 gallon long actually no 20 gallon high I made this one for a 75 gallon um, this is made a little bit different by just overlapping um, but it works perfectly. This fits perfectly in the 75 gallon. You can make it for any size. This is for a 55 gallon tank. Now, I use these. I use these guys when I'm, I'm breeding fish that are not necessarily fighting each other, trying to kill each other. They'll tolerate each other being on, on the opposite side. Um, normally, I put the side I put it this side in, so the male uh, will be on this side and the female over here. And I usually put a plate, and the reason for that being, he has more way of getting towards the eggs. It's deeper on this side, whereas if I put him facing this way, she might lay somewhere over here, and I don't know, maybe it doesn't reach. It could still reach, but still. So I like to do it that way. Now I only use these on particular uh, pairs that I see the aggression is not super high 
um, if it is super high, I tend to go back to these cages here. And you know, you can build this at any size. This actually held a, if I'm not mistaken, there was a Jaguar female in here. And I had a, a um, uh, I think it was a Red Devil. That I was trying to uh, read it with. The Red Devil was really, really nasty. Uh, he killed almost everything. But I did get to breed him with this particular female. Um, I didn't get any good eggs, but they were one of the pairs that died during the whole um, the whole uh, incident with the with the, the coon. So, you know, as you see behind me, this pair right here, this is my black nasty pair. Um, the only reason I don't have to have these divided. Is that man was blind in one eye, uh, not because of her. It was from a fight uh, that he had with a flower horn female. He's the father of my flower horn black nasty hybrids. I had babies from him. Um, he was local get here uh, from Buddy of mine. Uh, he's from Sickness of the America. He's my only survivor from that uh, particular place. Um, and they give me babies. I've actually uh, donated uh, some of the babies to the fish farms that I go to, uh, where I pick up my, my some of the fish I get. Um, I did in the beginning used to have them with these dividers uh, to introduce them, and then I noticed that he was trying to get her to breed, and I said, "Why not? Let me try them together. I'll do that." watch the behavior of your fish. Sometimes these things, what they, the way they work, uh, you'll start noticing that the fish get used to each other. Not all, but some. And they tend to uh, show you the behavior. You can kind of see them when they get up to the thing, they kind of try to court each other. Uh, if, they, if that's something the fish do, uh, you would call it that, but they would try to kind of Get, get each other to uh, notice themselves, you know. The males will flare up, put the colors up, the female will be hitting the bottom, uh, showing interest, and then I'll release them, you know. I'll say, okay, well, in this case, I just put them in here. They never really fought uh, when I put them in here. She kind of tries to fight him, um, but he, he just really avoids her. He's, he can only see on one eye. And so he, he kind of just avoids her. I think the only time I've seen them fight, uh, they love shrimp. And when I threw some shrimps in there, uh, that male was not wanting to share the shrimp. So he did bust a little bit of her lip. Um, this really was a saltwater tank. I literally kept everything in here that was from the saltwater tank. As uh, you can see, these shells come from a I can't say where it's from actually because of the person I don't want to get in trouble. But it's uh, some military base, uh, military island where they test stuff. And it's really rare. Uh, you're not allowed to bring this stuff in, I guess, but somehow he was able to. And I got it from some of these shells are really rare. Um, but this is my black ass pair. This is actually my favorite pair in here. Uh, that's why I have them inside. Behind me, I'll, and I'll show it after. I have a lot of my hybrids, uh, babies that the survivors. I stuck them all in here to try to make sure they don't die again if, if I ever get anything like that before. Now, I don't have a lot. I have one of each um, of my hybrids. Right now, so far, from the living ones that I have, uh, my, my best hybrid uh, that I can see are a Jaguar and a Cinespy. Uh, to my surprise, man, those babies came out awesome, and I'll make a video on that particular fish later. Uh, but I did have about 10 survivors, and all 10 of them were amazing. And sorry, I'm looking down, I'm just looking at them right now, because uh, making sure they're doing good. Um, I just did a major water change over there. Um, see a lot of scratching. Of course, these fish had to be brought out from outside uh, when they froze. Basically, I mean, some of them were in shock, not even moving. 
So I'm expecting some kind of maybe possibly ink. I hope not. Um, but I did have to toss them in here, uh, you know, without activating them because they want to make it uh, otherwise. So uh, I just wanted to share with you guys this. If you guys uh, want to find out the more details about it, uh, shoot me an email at the Mapfish Scientist at Yahoo.com. I can explain it more, uh, kind of guide you, especially where to get all the stuff uh, and how to measure it and all that and get it all perfectly aligned with your tank to make sure they can't push this over. Um, some people like to use suction cups to hold it, to hold it. I mean, I've built these for so long now that I make it so tight that uh, even my, at one point, my uh, 22 inch dough, I could remove it. Um, he did, however, uh, make giant holes in here, so you might need to use a different, if you have that kind of fish, you'll have to use a different kind of material. Alright guys, I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm also going to put a little clips here showing you uh, some of the fish I lost and stuff. And my next video will be uh, a quick pair uh, that I'm trying to breed and hopefully share it with you guys. And you guys, I'll talk a little bit about the behavior and show you guys, you know, how uh, to breed the fish basically and examine your own fish and look at whether they're bonding, whether you think it all ever, ever, they'll ever breed. Because uh, there's just some fish that don't like each other. Um, I had an umpy uh, that I put with dough buys to try to cross him forever. Uh, he never did even try. Uh, he wouldn't even get close to the, to the side of this um, divider or even when I did it with the cage. And as soon as I put a jaguar female nest to him, he's the father now of my hybrids, which I luckily was able to save four of them. You'll see a picture of the biggest one that died. They were looking pretty amazing. Um, but thank God I was able to save four of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry that it took long. I haven't done any videos in a while. I wanted to share this with anybody that is trying to breed uh, sickness or do anything like I'm doing. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. The notification I'm gonna keep bringing up some new uh, content and uh, hopefully God willing uh, my situation gets better and some new projects and show you guys what I'm working on. Thank you all and God bless.